Hi, Andy Herringshaw with Tractor Innovations. Today I'm in my hometown of Eugene, Oregon to show you the installation of a remote hydraulic kit onto this John Deere 3032E. This is absolutely the most affordable and easiest way to get a set of remote hydraulics on your tractor. Today we're installing this to the rear of the tractor to install a hydraulic top link, but this can power lots of different equipment on the back, including tow behind hay equipment or other implements that have a cylinder on them. You can also run these remotes to the front to power a grapple or snow blade or other loader mounted implement. This kit comes complete with all the hoses, fittings and couplers, brackets, hardware, and even the zip ties to install this on your tractor. Today we're installing a hydraulic top link and that comes from my shop as well. And I build these in lots of different sizes for these compact and subcompact tractors. Today we're installing on a John Deere, but I build these kits for lots of makes and models of tractors. Check out my website below to see all the different kits, cylinders, and things I make to make your tractor life better. The first step to installing this kit is to put the mounting bracket on top of the loader valve. We've got two bolts here that will come out, go through the bracket, and allow us to mount the diverter valve right out here, easy reach from the operator station. This is an older model 300E loader. If you've got a loader newer than 2023, you may have the fittings coming out the top and a different mounting for this valve. Not a problem, check out this picture. We just set the valve on two different bolts on the back side of the loader valve. All the same steps apply for this installation. A 13 millimeter wrench and socket will get this bolt taken out. If you notice, the loader valve is still held in by one bolt, so you're not risking dropping anything here. Okay, we take the bracket with the thin part towards the rear of the tractor, drop the bolt in, and put it right back through the shield and into the loader valve. Now we can mount the diverter valve onto the bracket. I've got the valve mounting bag and a magnetic bowl. We've got male couplers that come with the kit to put on your implement. I'm just gonna put those to the side. Take these bolts and put a washer on each of them. Now we're ready to slide those through the valve into the bracket. Hold the valve up with the hoses pointing forward and you'll just slide it onto the outside of that bracket. Add a lock washer and nut to the back and tighten with a half inch wrench. With the valve mounted, we can install the knob. Make sure your lock washer is on that knob and thread it into the piston. And often the piston will start to turn before it gets quite as tight as I want it to be. So get it as tight as you can. And then you can use a pair of vice grips and grip only on the outside of that circlip. Do not grab in here inside. One way to be sure you do that is to push the knob in. Now I just have that little lip I can grab and finish tightening the knob. Great. Next we're going to connect the diverter valve into the loader circuit. So we're gonna be disconnecting two hoses right here inside the loader arm taking those hoses back and connecting them here to the middle of the diverter valve. And then two hoses coming out of the diverter valve are gonna go right back to the loader. So that will complete the circuit to the loader and then we'll run the remote hoses to their final destination. We can choose to run this kit on the lift circuit or the dump circuit. 
Your lift circuit is the red and blue. Your dump circuit is the yellow and black. Your choice of which circuit to use may depend on how you're going to use this circuit. If you're running it to the front to run a grapple or other implement on the loader, you may want to use the dump circuit. That's going to be your left and right to control that implement so that you never have to give up your lift and dump function. If you are running the remotes to the rear, lots of people like to use the lift circuit to run the rear remotes. What that gives you is for a hydraulic top link, you can have the float function. You can push this loader control lever all the way up and whatever you've got hooked up to the rear top link or other thing can drift. That cylinder isn't locked in place. The other thing it gives you is just really intuitive control. You can set it up to forward, brings the hydraulic top link in, back pushes it out. Really love that. One more bit to think about is the right and left dump control generally has what's called the regenerative circuit, which means when you're pushing right on this loader lever, it is applying pressure to both sides of the cylinder, so it will not run a hydraulic motor in that direction, and some cylinders you have hooked up to it will have limited pushing power. Usually still adequate, but if you're trying to raise a really heavy implement, your best bet is to go with the lift circuit. On this tractor, we're gonna be installing a hydraulic top link, so we are gonna install this on the lift circuit. We're gonna be installing it on the red and the blue. So what I need to do is take a look. This tractor already has this uh, kind of protective sleeve worn out a bit. So we're just gonna roll it up and get a little more space to work here. You may have, to, on your tractor, you may have to cut a zip tie to uh, get a little more working room. We are gonna have to take these hoses and curl them back to connect here to the diverter valve. Before you disconnect anything in your loader circuit, take a minute and relieve all the pressure in your hydraulic system. So move that lever to all four positions, lower your three-point hitch. If you have an existing third function, turn the key on, hit the button each way, move everything several times to make sure there's no pressure in your system. Makes for a clean install and safe install. So I'm gonna disconnect these hoses. I'm gonna do just one at a time um, so that I don't get anything mixed up. The red is kind of forward of the blue, so when I come back here to the diverter valve, I'm gonna put red in front. That'll just help me keep everything straight. And then the hose coming out of the front is gonna go right back to that red. Things have gotten a little messy, so I'm going gloves on. We're gonna take this hose, it's the red that comes from the front fitting, so we're gonna bend it right around here and connect it to the front middle port of this diverter valve. And I've pulled back this sleeve protector. You could completely remove this hose from the sleeve protector, but I think it's gonna work well just pulled back like that. Now we'll move the blue hose. I do like to do these completely one at a time if possible. Disconnect red, hook up the red, and then move to blue. But there's not enough room to get in here with the wrenches on the blue if the red hose is in place. So I'm gonna disconnect the blue with the red out of place. Since the blue came off last, and we need uh, space to get in there with the wrenches before the red goes on, let's do blue. Blue is in the rear, so I'm gonna work this hose into place. Take your time here, you can get a really nice hose routing that looks really professional and clean. It is tight there, but I got it. If you need more space, you could undo this keeper bolt and uh, pull these hoses out for a little more flexibility. 
Blue hose is finished. Now let's connect the red. Take your time here. You can end up with the hoses not crossing. And I, I, uh, I put the red under the blue so they keep a really nice routing. This diverter valve is now hooked into the loader circuit and we're ready to run the remotes to their final placement. The hoses are now plumbed into the loader circuit so the diverter valve is ready to take fluid off your loader circuit and put it to the remotes. Now we just need to take the remotes and run them to their final location. If you're making front remotes, we can run them along the loader arm and to the crossbar and mount the remotes in the bracket right there. Let me show you a picture of what that looks like. But today we're running remotes to the rear of the tractor. So I've got the hoses here and they've got 90 degree fittings on the end that are left loose so that you can get the angles just like you want them. It has a note there that says tighten before use, but we're just gonna take those off for right now. And now we can run these hoses underneath the tractor and up just in front of the fuel tank and we'll be able to mount the remotes right here inside the roll bar for easy access behind the tractor. Look for a route for these hoses along existing pipes or where you have things that can support the hoses. We can zip tie to mounting points or other firm things under the tractor and also keep them away from moving linkages like the brakes, three point control or other things that might move underneath the tractor. Take your time here so your hoses don't end up twisted. You can get them all straight and lined out. Poke them up above the axle here and then you'll be able to reach them from the operator station. All right, the hoses just need to reach this far. We're gonna put the bracket right here and mount the couplers into the bracket. So that is perfect placement. Now I can loosely thread the coupler onto the hose well, I'll finish tightening that once we get them mounted in the bracket, but they'll at least rest easily here. Now I can mount the remote coupler bracket. I brought my magnetic bowl. I've got a T-bar and a backer and the hardware kit for the remote couplers. This T-bracket is gonna mount just inside the roll bar and for those couplers to mount into. To do that, the backer has to sit on the outside of the roll bar. So I'm gonna put the bolts through the backer so it looks good from the outside of the tractor. Slide those just under the tail light and the T-bar goes on the inside. Follow that up with a lock washer and nut on each bolt. To finish tightening in its final location, raise this bracket up just so it's not rubbing on the fuel tank there and finish tightening with a half inch wrench. To mount the couplers into the bracket, we'll hold the coupler right up to the center there. Use a U-bolt right over the middle of it and slide that U-bolt through the bracket. Lock washer and nut goes on each bolt. You can tighten these, but don't over tighten them. If you go too tight, this outer sleeve will pinch the inner part and it won't be able to spring in and out. So just a light tightening here. Before I put the second one on and cover up this joint, we did have that note that said tighten before use. So we've got that in its final location. I'm gonna tighten it now with a 7 8 and one inch wrench. Repeat those steps for the second coupler.
before I call it complete at the back of the tractor, I want to take a male coupler and make sure that each of these female couplers can accept and release the coupler. You should be able to just push in to connect and pull out to disconnect. If you can't, this one gave me a little trouble. I'm going to see if maybe I over tightened the U-bolt or there could be mechanical uh, interference back here at the back somewhere. Sometimes even this other hose overlapping. Nope, it's still tight. I think I over tightened it. There we go. That's all it takes. So I can go ahead and plug in this hydraulic top link and I'm going to install it to my box blade and we'll give it a demo. The last step is to zip tie these hoses up out of the way so that they don't snag on anything and then we'll demo with the hydraulic top link. Well there you have it, the easiest and most affordable way to get a set of remote hydraulics on your tractor. With a simple push and pull of this knob, you can activate or deactivate the remote and switch from either having full loader function or controlling the remotes. Today we took them to the rear of the tractor to install this hydraulic top link, but this exact same kit could run remotes to the front of your tractor for a grapple, snow blade, or other front mounted implement. Today the install was on a John Deere, but I build this kit for lots of makes and models of tractors. Check out my website right here below to see all the different kits I make, including the hydraulic top link that I build for these compact and subcompact tractors. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for a demo. Let me show you how this diverter valve kit works. With the knob pushed in, I've got completely normal loader function, lift and dump. Of course, it's only going to go down right now because the engine is off. But when I pull out on the knob, now my lift function is locked out. I can still dump if I want to, right and left will still dump, but forward and back is going to control the hydraulic top link. I'll start with the knob pushed in. I've got completely normal loader function. But when I'm ready to control the hydraulic top link, pull out on the knob, and now I've got full range of motion there, and I can still dump. When I want full control of my loader back, I just push the knob in. Thanks for watching.